Okay, Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Our lesson is about confidence. What can we have confidence in? Anybody read the lesson? <laughs> No response. Oh, boy. I have confidence in the Lord doing yeah. what he said he'd do. Mm -hmm. Well, our lesson is, remember, we're, lear we're learning about Jesus and who he is, right? And that he's greater than Ju Judaism. He's greater than Moses. He's greater than the prophets. He's greater than the angels. Because who is he? He be God. Greater than Mel You know? <laughs> so... In, in four, the first part of it, again, we get a little bit of uh, redundancy in explaining about making sure we're doing the right thing so we can enter his rest, unlike those who went through the desert, right, who could not enter his rest, okay? Our lesson this week is focusing on the last part of four and the first part of chapter five, so, if we drop down to 11, and I wrote the word now, comma, in front of it, now, because of all of this that's happened before, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall through following the same example of disobedience. You don't want to be like the disobedient Israelites that ended up wandering in the wilderness and dying out in the wilderness in a 40-year period, right? Correct them on day. <laughs> you know, when Jesus offers us rest, why not take it <laughs> and stick with it? And we went through last week about you're able to stick with it to the end because you truly had it to begin with. <laughs> Those who don't make it to the oh, end I didn't really start didn't well. <laughs> right? Verse 12 for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. <laughs> What's the word of God? Living and active. What is it? <laughs> the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Jesus. Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, <laughs> and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? Who's judging us and our intentions of our heart, but Jesus himself, Jesus. right? Yes. 13, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do, <laughs> Right? If we were to go to the bottom of the sea, he'd be there. There's Jesus. If we were to go to the moon, he's there. He is, right? He's always there. And we have to deal with the fact that we have this sin nature. We have to deal with Jesus, who's going to judge us, we're going to separate the sheep and the goats. <laughs> Right? No matter where we are, we have to deal with that. But in verse 14, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So we have this, quote, great high priest. Mm -hmm. Right? Who's the high priest? Jesus. He's our high priest. Mm -hmm. He's writing to the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. What do they know about the high priest? That would be God the Father. No. It's the guy that leads the temple. The guy in the temple, what oh, does he okay. do? What's his unique assignment of the high priest? He's supposed to interpret what God says. He, well, he represents God to the people. He represents the people to God. That's his main thing. But in order for there to be atonement, what did he have to do? Make sacrifice. Make sacrifice. Have sacrifice. For? For the sins. Of? The people. The people. 
Before he could do that, what did he have to do? He had to kill a bull. He had to kill a bull. <laughs> he, that's exactly right, because he had to make sacrifice for his own sins <laughs> and for his family. <laughs> Before he could be cleansed to be able to enter the Holy of Holies. Right? The Holy of Holies, what's in the Holy of Holies? Ark. Ark of the, the Ark of the Covenant. What's on top of the Ark of the Covenant? Two cherubims. Two cherubims. And? Mercy seat. The mercy seat. Right? Mm -hmm. So he'd go in there and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. Now, rumor has it that he had a rope tied around his ankle. Because nobody else could go in there. That's right. Something happened to him. They'd have to pull him out from behind the curtain. He was supposed to have bells on his... <laughs> Uh, he did, but if he fell down or something, you know, they couldn't go in there to get him. <laughs> so he, I understand they had a rope tied around his ankle so they could pull him out if they had to, right? Because he was the only one that could go in there. Now, Jesus now being our great high priest who passed through the heavens. What does that mean? He came from heaven. I think what they're saying here more explicitly is he went back to heaven. He ascended after being resurrection. He ascended back to heaven, passed through the heavens. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you have a king and he has a son, is the king royal is the son of the king royalty? Yeah, yeah. So the Son of God is deity. There's I mean there's no getting around this. And all those people that want to make Jesus out to be Michael the Archangel or some other created being or whatever, you know, they, they totally missed the point. You know, Satan's not called the great deceiver for nothing. He's good at deceiving people into believing all kinds of garbage. But if you actually study the Bible and let it tell you what it says, right, it's very clear that Jesus is God. So he's telling us that we have a high priest who's passed through the heavens, who is God himself, right? Let us hold fast our confession. What's our confession? That Jesus is God. Jesus, yeah, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our Savior, right? We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. What's unique about Jesus? He was without sin. He was without sin, mm -hmm. but he was a man. He was a man, mm -hmm. right? A high priest who cannot sympathize. You know, we're going to read in a minute that the high priest is a, a selected. God chose who the high priest would be, right? But he chose him from the men, mm -hmm. right? So he could sympathize with us. What's the difference between sympathize and empathize? Empathize is... You feel our pain. Mm -hmm. Sympathize says, "Oh, I'm sorry." The other way around. Sympathize. To have empathy means, "Oh, I'm really sorry that you're down there in that well and can't get out." <laughs> Sympathize means I jumped in the well with you and we're going to get out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, what did he do? He became a man. I jumped in the muck with you. Who then was tempted in all things as we are. So can he sympathize with us as the quote human high priest could? Sure. Because he's human. And God. The unique God man of all history. Right? You know, so he, he does that for us. Right? Now, when, when Christ was tempted and yet did not sin, what did he use to avoid sin? How did he, how did he not sin? Uh, prayer. What did, he use? what did he use? What was his weapon? Prayer to God. Prayer and? Scripture. Scripture. <laughs> right? And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. What do we have? We have the Holy All Spirit. All of those things. <laughs> right? We just don't. Choose not to sin like Jesus did, right? Okay, verse 16. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to, 
to help in time of need. So the high priest could only enter the Holy of Holies once a year, once a year. right? Mm -hmm. To make atonement for the sins of the people. Once a year. So he's, it's all this purification mm -hmm. process, right? We are to draw near, or, and by the way, this is an ongoing, the Greek tense, it's ongoing. We are to keep drawing near, mm -hmm. right? We are to approach God, just keep on approaching God with confidence. One of the commentary was talking about a picture of when Kennedy was president, and he's in the office, and he's working on some papers, and his son is sitting by his desk on the floor playing. Right? Yeah. You know, how many people would be allowed to enter <laughs> the Oval Office while the president was working just to play? Any pinch jumper. Yeah, any pinch jumper. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, this is recorded, right? In yeah. the future, people are going to go, what? <laughs> A pinch <laughs> jumper? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, any pinch jumper. You know, but the sun... The son is allowed, right? right. Mm -hmm. The family, right? Now, God has opened the door through Jesus for us to come boldly. So when we have a need, even when we don't have a need, can we come to the throne of grace? Yes. Right? Yes, we can. Who's there? Who's at the throne of grace? Jesus. God the Father. God the Father is there. Jesus would be there. Yeah, God is there. What does He do for us? Jesus is there interceding mm -hmm. with God the Father. We come into the room and say, Oh Lord, <laughs> boy do I need help again today. <laughs> right? And what does He do? Does He kick us out? No. no. He's going to give us what? Mercy, Mercy and grace? <laughs> At the proper time. At the proper time. It's his time. His time. Yeah, his Not time. necessarily mine. <laughs> yeah, you and I got that story down. <laughs> right? Now, what's the difference between mercy and grace? Well, grace is unmerited favor. You can't do anything to earn it. You can't Getting something we don't deserve. Right. Grace. Mm -hmm. What's mercy? <coughs> Not getting. Not getting. What, what we, we do deserve. deserve. <laughs> right? So God is providing for us everything we need, not giving us what we don't want or deserve, right? But giving us mercy and then giving us grace. And sound we like can a, enter. Sound like a whitewash, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of well, it's like more that. than that. It's cleaned up from the inside out yeah. instead of the outside in. And well, he says we can come with confidence, with boldness. We have perfect freedom to speak our mind. Mm -hmm. Whatever our problem is, God's telling us, come and tell me about it. Talk to me. If you had a problem at home, could you go to your father and say, Dad, I got this issue. And he'd help you figure out how to take care of it? No. <laughs> well, not usually, the, not, the usually issues, not of my father. <laughs> the issues usually involve the parents. <laughs> 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 Well, well, I pretty much grew up without a father, too, so I had to go to mom with whatever my problem was, right? You know. Oh, I preferred too. going to my mother. <laughs> you know, but, you know, as children, normally we can go to our fathers and, you know, they're there to, and want to help us. Well, God is there for us, wanting to help us, mm -hmm. right? No, so if we have problems... If we have problems with our faith, where do we go? To God. If we have problems with fear, where do we go? Go to God. If we have problems with sin, where do we go? Go to God. We better go to God. Because the sin is rupturing that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You ever notice when you do something you know you shouldn't do, and the next thing you know, you can feel that separation Absolutely. from the Holy Spirit? You know, you can feel that problematic... <laughs> Just, you know, you just feel it start to happen. You know, oh, Say, Lord. Why did I do that? Yeah, then you're like, why on earth did I do that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we get to come to God. He's asking us, begging us, you know, to come. Let me help you. Now, again, like Jerry said, his answer may not be the one we expect. 
or when we expect it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but who knows best? He did. <laughs> Father knows best, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, <coughs> for every high priest, chapter 5, verse 1, taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in things pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. So mm -hmm. the high priest is taken. He's selected from among men. Right? Those men Again, he can sympathize by. with us. Right? And he's appointed on behalf of men. He's there to represent us before God and to represent God to us on things pertaining to God. So who selected him? God did. God did, yeah. So they didn't have a ballot. They didn't run for office, right? God selected him. He didn't have any TV commercials. <laughs> he didn't even have to run TV commercials, did he? Right? And he's there to offer both gifts and sacrifices. The, the nearest I can find out what that represents, we know the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. The gifts I didn't get, so I was trying to find out. The nearest I can get out of it is it's the whole sacrificial system. Everything he had to do. You know. And Paul listed gifts of the Spirit. Yeah, but this mm -hmm. is what we're, what he's offering to God, see, four sins. It's not what, you know, gifts is what God's given us, actually, right? The gift of salvation, okay? <clears throat> well, let's just assume that that's right. It's the whole, he's there, he represents the people to God, and he does the whole thing. He leads it, and of course the main thing is the atonement, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 2, he can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided since he himself also is beset with weakness. Being a man. He's a man, right? So he has all the same weaknesses we have. He has the sin nature, right? Uh -huh. He makes a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. which is why he's got to sacrifice the bull. Mm -hmm. Are bulls valuable? Oh, yeah, Especially a spotless one. Especially a spotless one. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, this is the best bull. Of now, all the bulls, this is the best bull. Now, did do you think the bulls were? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm back in. No. Okay. <laughs> the point is, he had his weaknesses too. Sure. And so he had to make the sacrifices for himself first, and that's what we go on here. And because he is, because of it, he's obligated to offer sacrifices for sins. You know, as for the people, so also for himself, because he's a man, right? A sinful man. Jesus is not a sinful man. So he has all the positives that we need. But he can sympathize with us. He's tempted like we were and are, right? But without sin. So he can make the ultimate sacrifice. His blood can cleanse from all sin for all people for all time. <laughs> Verse 4, no one takes the honor to himself. You don't get to go take it, right? You can't be some king somewhere, conquer Jerusalem, and say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm now high priest. <laughs> right? But receives it when he is called by God, even as Aaron was. God had to call him. You remember the story how God said, I'm going to take all the Levites. Uh -huh. <laughs> said, you owe me your firstborn sons. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm going to swap you. <laughs> you can keep your firstborn sons. I'm, I'm taking the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make Aaron the high priest. And all the high priests in the future will be descendants of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Right? But God selected him. Mm -hmm. Right? Aaron wasn't running for high priest. <laughs> you know? Because what it says, and no one takes the honor. You can't go get it yourself. How do you get salvation? You just decide one day you're going to go get it? No. How do you get it? Well, you have to ask for it. <laughs> yeah, one. First and foremost, you have to be touched by the Holy Spirit to even know what to ask for to be saved. Yeah, it's, a, it's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. God chose us. Well, by we, grace, you are saved through faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if we. Gift of God. Yeah. We can't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
Only by the grace of God. The gift of salvation is available to us. Okay? Same thing here, except it's the high priest being appointed, you know, by God. God chose him. <clears throat> Verse 5. So also Jesus did not glorify himself as to become high priest. Je was Jesus setting out to be high priest? No. <laughs> Did he? Is that something he really wanted to do? You think of the Garden of Gethsemane. Was this something Jesus really thought was a great idea? <laughs> you know, I don't think so. You know, that was quite a torment there, right? <clears throat> but God appointed Jesus, and as we read here in the passage, forever. This is not a <laughs> every year we got to do it over and over and over again. It's a one-time deal, forever. In Psalms 2, it says, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Psalms 2 is a psalm that was used historically in the <coughs> ceremony for the new king. But after the Babylonian captivity, they realized none of these kings lived up to this. And it became a psalm that they recognized was messianic. But yet it applies to Jesus, the Messiah. Just as he also, in another passage, this is Psalms 110, Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> We're going to learn more about Melchizedek when we get to chapter 7. He's a unique character, right? <coughs> you all remember the story? <coughs> Abraham gathered up his, what, 315 <laughs> trained armed men, and they mm -hmm. went... To, to recover Lot because these four kings from the east had come and conquered Sodom and had taken him and all his stuff captive in it. So Abraham went and got them all back, right? And he comes back with all the people and all the goods and he gives a tenth of everything mm -hmm. to the priest of the true God. Mm -hmm. which is a he disappears. Well, we never heard of him before. Or, or the sense. king of Salem, which may very mm -hmm. well be Jerusalem, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Short, Probably. Yeah. Salem was a short name for Jerusalem. You know, on the other hand, we don't we don't see any birth record. We don't see any death record, mm -hmm. right? I have no land. And he was greater than Abram because mm -hmm. he blessed Abram, right? So this is what's going on here. This story. In Genesis 14, in order, according to the order of Melchizedek, probably going to be an interesting study when we study more about him <laughs> when we get to chapter 7 here. There he is, according to White Cliff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what you got there? Melchizedek. All right. Yeah, 22nd century B.C., Genesis 14. I see. Okay, do we have any questions or comments about Jesus, our high priest, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace? Isn't that great? Praise God. What a thought. We can enter the throne of the Most High God <laughs> because He's already made it available to us. This is why Catholics have the priests, don't they? They follow. <clears throat> well, they have the intermediaries. This is saying we don't need an intermediary. I know, but they they say we do because of the original. They say we do, but this says God's word says we don't. We can come boldly, straight to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. But you can scratch that out. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, like you say, people do things to the Word of God, and butcher it up in all kinds of ways. Just let, let God tell you what it really says, because He wrote it, right? right? And it says we can enter. So when we got issues, no matter what they are, from high blood pressure, <laughs> mm -hmm. right, to the friend with skin cancer, you know, to deaths in the family, big stuff, little stuff, you know, how am I going to pay my electric bill this week, or, right? My oh, yeah. sons have problems, right? My grandchildren have problems. problems. Well, we live in the real world. Everybody's going to have problems, right? But what can we do? We can go right to God's throne. And who yeah. has the most capability to assist? Jesus. Yeah. 
Exactly. So why do we wallow in the problem ourselves and not take it to God? Because we think we're smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thus proving how ignorant we when actually are. are. <laughs> right. And it's very difficult for the human mind to turn it over, over to him completely. Yeah. Well, that's pride. Right? That's right. I, I, I'll, Lord, get, I got this one. <laughs> how, do you you know. how do you get in a pride? It's always there. You just have to really find it. Well, you go to God and say, God, I need help getting rid of my pride. It's like the lady that was late for a meeting and was driving looking for a parking place and said, Lord, please give me a parking place real quick. And somebody backed out and right in front and she said, never mind, God, I found one myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, all too often we... Uh, we behave similar to that, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah. So instead of trying to so instead of <laughs> trying to do everything all by ourselves, why not go get the greatest power that there is to help us?